world was prosperous until the gods were corrupted by a plague with no cure. One that controlled a mind in a horrific ways that called that's called dark rot. This corruption of the gods brought wars that can haunt a man for centuries. A winter that will last until the end of time. Oh, we got to get some music. We got to get some music. What am I doing? What am I doing? We got to get some music popping. This like medieval? I feel like this is medieval. I feel like this one's medieval. <laughs> Shout out to Shirley. Yeah, Dove Shirley. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, play. There we go. This is solid. This is solid. This is solid. This is solid. Sherlin a dub. Okay. Um. Okay, where were we at? And an underlying gloom across the world, parts of this world are dead. Most parts are dying. This is not a tale of one true survivor. There is no saving this. Rather, this story is about those who live in this cursed time, willing to do anything to survive, and none of these scum are pure of soul. What? <laughs> Felicious, a cat folk who uses a sword, is an expert fighter, but is extremely paranoid about everything. And I mean everything. <laughs> Surely this is perfect. This is perfect. You know, Tupac label released a Tupac lo-fi album on Spotify. I did not. I did not know that. Okay. Create room. Standard images. Oh, I have two coins now. I'm going to have to get with them to get more coins, I think. Or one of y'all going to have to start it. <laughs> so I think if you guys copy this. You should be able to join. Brokey, there's no way to buy more. <laughs> oh, there's so many characters. Deadeye, human who is old and blind, but can always sense danger when it's close and can pinpoint enemies with a throwing knife. He can constantly tells tales of his past before the apocalypse. I'm that's me. That's me. I'll I'll be dead eye. I'll be dead eye. I'll be dead eye. I'll be dead, I bet. At them and tell them to give you coins real quick. I did, I did, I did. It's late their time right now though. It's really late their time. So none of them might be online at the moment. <laughs> I, I thought the gold ones would help. I thought the gold ones would help. Oh, we can't do it at all. Oh yeah, one of you guys are gonna have to start it then. Yeah, one of you guys are going to have to start it. Yeah, dang. I thought the gold ones would turn into the silver ones. Come on, y'all. Join up. It can only be three. It can only be three. Yeppy. Yeah, as of now. Podu, start that one up. Start up Frostburn. Podu. And just drop the code in there. Yeah, it's only up to three right now, Yepi. They say the bot right now hasn't learned how to go past that. They said the bot is very experimental past three players. Which I was like, I, I don't know a lot about AI stuff. So if you saying that, I'm taking your word for it. I'm taking your word for it, but you'll see, Yepi. If if this is your first time seeing this, Yepi, I think your I think your mind's gonna be blown. I think your mind's gonna be blown, Yepi, because this this uh, this is by far the best AI we've played. 
I should make one of these. It looks like it would be fun. Goonster, yes. <laughs> Goonster, yes. Make one, please. Make one, please. I know you would make a good one. I know you would make a good one. Does it understand expressions? Uh, I mean, you could tell, you could tell Bob. Yeah, we're good. We're good, Podu. You could tell Bob. So, okay. When we get in here, we'll wait. I'll, I'll explain everything to you once we get in here. So you can, so you can understand it a little bit more. Oh, look at the background. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to mute up real quick just so you can hear me. So in the top right is your health. If that hits zero, you die. You're dead. You can see everybody else's stats here. So you get Bob. Bob is your like AI. So I could tell Bob like, hey, can you like make sure that like how many knives do I have in my inventory? Or like where where is Podu standing in this situation? Bob is like basically our AI that's like understanding the story and telling it. So then out of that, you have actions as well. You have like a heart action, which is your healing. You have an action, which if you would have seen from the beginning, like he gave everybody actions. You have a team action where it relates to all characters. And then there's a rest option. <laughs> Felicia is a skilled warrior. Podu is no ordinary opponent. He is powerful and cunning. Are you ready to face this formidable challenge? Oh my gosh. So anyway, off of that, we all have our own actions that we take. And once we finish taking our actions, that's when the story progresses. <sighs> so in the cold and gloomy shack, Lilo Clue, who is that? That's Podu, Deadeye and Felicious, cautiously entered. Their eyes scanning the surroundings. The air was heavy with the scent of decay and the floor creaked under their weight. As they moved deeper into the shack, they noticed a glimmer of light coming from a cracked window, casting eerie shadows on the walls. Lilo Clue's eyes widened with excitement as he spotted a dusty chest in the corner. He hurried, made his way towards it, his powers rattling in his pockets. Deadeye, relying on his heightened senses, stood ground near the entrance, his throwing knife ready to strike. Come on now. Felicious, ever vigilant, surveyed the room for any signs of danger. Suddenly, a group of skeletal creatures emerged from the shadows, their bony figures reaching out uh, towards the adventurers. Uh, Lilo Clue, caught off guard, stumbled backward, his pow powders scattering across the floor, unsheathed his sword, his paranoia replaced by focus and determination. With each swing of his blade, Felicious dispatched the remaining skeletons. Their bones shattering against the walls, the room fell silent once again. Save their perilous journey. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, save for the heavy breed, okay. They exchanged glances knowing that this was just the beginning of their journey. As they continued their search for supplies, the shack seemed to come alive with whispers of forgotten tales and ancient secrets. Little did they know their destined destiny awaited them beyond the confines of this desolate place. Can we can we give a shout out to to uh to our boy Sherlin for making this. So, oops, I didn't know y'all could see that. <laughs> yes, we can see everything you asked, Bob. Okay. I'm gonna say, oh, I low key don't remember what my team action was. Ooh, that should be a, a, a plus. We should tell them that. I don't remember what my team action was. Dang, yeah, that should that should be part of it looks cool it's like a gp that's literally it twisted so what, what what i didn't tell yepi is your decisions get judged by bob so then bob gives you an odds on the dice like dungeons and like dungeons and dragons so all of your actions still have a chance of not going as planned that's what makes it like oh this is fire click on it oh that's where it shows it 
Shout out to the gang. Shout out to the gang. Shout out to the gang. Moko, we're playing your we're playing your uh thing. We're playing your story, Charlotte. Okay, and then you could use free will. Okay, I'm gonna use free will right here. Search the skeleton's bodies for any loot that might help our journey. They could have dropped a, a weapon or some material that can help us help us in the future. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. Roll the dice. So let me ask you, asking Bob, does that have to do with everybody as a whole? Or could I ask Bob something that only relates to me? Or is it anything? Anything goes asking Bob. Like Bob is just literally the guy that's sitting here running this game. Oh, I got hurt. What happened? What did Podu do? I went back to the chest after my other teammates down the guards and skeletons and opened it up to see a map. I quickly say Lilo clue as to alert and be excited as I picked it up and rolled it and showed the others. Okay. I searched the skeletons. Wait, wait, what? As Lilo Clue excitedly unrolled the map, his eyes widened in disbelief. It was no ordinary map. It revealed the location of a hidden treasure rumored to possess unimaginable power. The adventurers exchanged glances, their hearts pounding with anticipation. This discovery could change their lives forever. Meanwhile, Deadeye searched the skeletal remains for any loot. Unfortunately, the skeletons held nothing of value, sick. Oh, I didn't roll good at all. I rolled a six for a few rusty coins and a tattered piece of parchment. Great. <laughs> Dead eye pocketed the coins. <laughs> hey, them coins might come in handy later. I might buy us a little something, something later. Hoping they would come in handy later. Uh, Felicia's driven by his paranoia, kicked Lilo Clue accidentally instead of the chest. The impact sent Lilo Clue flying across the room, crashing into a stack of crates. <laughs> The crates toppled over, revealing a hidden passage beneath them. Felicius stared wide-eyed at the unexpected discovery, realizing that his clumsiness had inadvertently led them to a secret underground chamber. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Can you tell us what was the reasoning for the negative 15? Uh, uh, no, wait. Where was Yeppy's action at though? Oh, was it just, I, yeah, Yeppy, what did it say for yours for, for the reason why he didn't like it? Cause wouldn't it say it under here or am I tripping? Anything is okay, but you have one question per party per turn. Oh, we can't do Bob like that. This action is physically self-harming and goes against the player's background as a paranoid cat. Folk. <laughs> That's good. That is good. So guys, don't waste our ask Bob question. Don't waste our ask Bob question then. The impact sent this man into, f we discovered something though. Wait, little did we know a powerful sorcerer named Podu awaited them in the shadows, ready to unleash his. Charlotte put Podu in the game? Did Charlotte put you in the game or did he just know that? Yes, yes, yes. Did Charlotte put you in the game or did it just know that?
I don't know where the best place to put my camera is. Here? No, I didn't. Whoa, <laughs> Poto, you're in the game. <laughs> Jen, what's good? Welcome in, welcome in. I see how it is, Charlotte. So we just we just approached our first boss. Put it on the logo. This actually isn't bad up here because if we already read the the former thing, this actually isn't bad. This is actually a good spot. Oh, Bob's a Bob's a good one. Bob's a good guy. Okay. So wait, we could only ask Bob one question? We can only ask Bob one question? Because if we could only ask Bob one question, that's tough. Because I have something I want to ask it. I'm just going to ask it. What if we do that? Whoever asks him first. <laughs> Is there anything in the room that our team can dodge behind to avoid being hit by the sorcerer? As the adventurer cautiously enter the secret underground chamber, their eyes scan the surroundings for any possible cover. They notice a row of ancient stone pillars living lining the chambers providing them with ancient stone pillar okay so we do we do have cover oh i like this i like using bob now at first i didn't understand how to use bob you have to think about or someone will troll i didn't really i didn't understand how to use bob now i do oh don't forget the chest before you go that's smart twisted that's smart twisted I was going for a few minutes. What are we doing? Harry, this is V3 RPG. We are playing with an AI dungeon master right now. We are playing with an AI dungeon master right now. Well, I'm going to say forget them. I'm going to say forget them. Yeah, you do have a countdown timer too. Yep. So we can't sit here forever. Podu, I rubbed my hands as it was cold in the tunnel. I said, Lilo Clue is a concerned way to check on my teammates as it was all dark in the tunnel and I could see only see my breath as I made my way further into the tunnel. I bumped into Podu. Just run. <laughs> I get behind cover because my character is a very, a very accurate character. So I get behind cover to see if I can notice any weak spots on the sorcerer while he is distracted looking at my other teammates. Oh, you're right. Yep, he said his name at the beginning to Bob. If the questions affect the game, that's probably why Podu's in the world. That's crazy. <laughs> that is crazy. Distracted and looking at my other teammates. Okay. Yep, he made Podu a star. That's wild. All right, let's roll it up. Come on. Come on, good roll, good roll, good roll. Bob liked that. Bob liked my action. Bob liked my action. I get behind Deadeye and wait for the next move because I'm nervous. <laughs> We're dead. We're dead. All right, as the adventurers 
cautiously entered the secret chamber, their breath visible in the cold darkness. Lilo Clue's concerned. Lilo Clue? Echoed through the tunnel. Suddenly, he bumped into a figure standing in his path. It was Podu, the powerful sorcerer they had been seeking. Startled, Podu stumbled backwards momentarily distracted from his dark magic. Deadeye, taking advantage of the distraction, quickly moved behind cover and observed the sorcerer for any weaknesses. His keen eyes noticed a faint shimmering aura surrounding Podu's left hand, indicating a potential vulnerability. Felicious, or Philicus? I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Feeling nervous, positioned himself behind Deadeye, ready to strike if needed. The encounter with Podu had revealed a hidden passage leading to the city. Emerging from the underground, the adventurers found themselves in a broken and chaotic city. Shopkeepers hurriedly closed their stalls while pickpocket children roamed the alleys. The outbreak of dark rot in the East District had led to a quarantine, making it dangerous to be out after sunset. However, the quickest way to the neighboring city was through the East District. They would have to decide whether to risk the infected hives or take the longer route and face potential ban- I'm gonna heal up this round. I'm gonna heal up this turn. Meet a shopkeeper? Oh, I did find coins off them skeletons. Oh, I did find coins off them skeletons. Using the coins I got. From the skeleton attack. I tell the group, let's go to the shopkeeper before leaving town to purchase something that can help us. I'm throwing it in Bob's court. I'm lobbing it up to Bob. Bob, get us something with the money that I found from those skeletons. <laughs> Bob, Bob, please. Bob, please. Bob, please. Bob, please. I rolled a three. Bob liked it though. Bob like, oh my gosh. It's a website, it's a website. Ask some questions. Oh, this is asking Bob questions is a lot of pressure. Okay, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. Is the shop something that adventurers go to to purchase items that can help an adventure? <laughs> The shop is in, in the broken and chaotic city are indeed places where adventurers can purchase items to aid them in their adventures. However, due to the outbreak of dark rot, many shopkeepers have closed their stalls, making it difficult to find supplies. <laughs> so Bob knows that this city is, is going under. <laughs> Bob knows this city is going under. Okay. All right. That's why I. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, Harry, I can drop the link to you. I can drop the link to you. Wow. Wow. That's tough. What's this? I just got back. This is a, an AI dungeon master. We are letting an AI take us through an adventure right now. Uh, while shopping, I tell Deadeye secretly that all of this is a setup from Lee Clue. <laughs> Since I'm paranoid, we should do something. Yeah, be in the store like, hey, 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 <laughs> hey, we should look out, we should look out for that guy. <laughs> we should look out for that guy. Dead eye, dead eye, come here, come here. Dead eye, come here, let me tell you something. 
<laughs> Don't get dark right. It's horrible. <sighs> My things are too long. Yeah, is there a um is there a character limit? There is a character limit, right? There is a character limit. I think we we learned that last time we played this. I think we did learn that last time we played this. 250? Okay. Okay. All my responses hit the limit. <laughs> yeah, I had to learn that. I had to learn. I learned that from um uh the OG Chat GPT. I learned that from Chat GPT. The more wordier you get, it gets more confused. It gets a lot more confused. Dude, we all rolled low. We all rolled really low. I'm kind of nervous to read this. I have one health. I I have one health. Yepi heal. Yepi heal. Yepi heal. Just hit the heart. Just click the heart. Heal, please. All right. As the adventurers made their way through the broken and chaotic city, Lilo Clue carefully studied the treasure map, plotting the best route to their destination. However, Deadeye suggested they visit a shopkeeper before leaving town to purchase supplies. Intrigued by the idea, Lilo Clue pointed out the route he had planned, leading them towards a small shop tucked away in a dimly lit alley. <clears throat> Inside, the shopkeeper's eyes widen at the sight of the adventurers, recognizing them as potential customers. Deadeye approached the counter, his coins clinking in his hand, but as he reached out to make a purchase, a sudden gust of wind blew through the shop, extinguishing all the candles. In the darkness, the adventurers heard a sinister laughter echoing around them. Panic filled the air as the shopkeeper... Yeppy, fight through the pain, rolled an 11? <laughs> That's all I seen out of the corner of my eye, Yeppy. That's all I seen out of the corner of my eye, Yeppy. Fight through the pain. <laughs> all right, caught off guard, the adventurers fought back desperately, their weapons clashing against the creature's twisted limbs. The battle was fierce, but the adventurers managed to defeat the creature its body crumbling into decay. Good job, y'all. Gasping for breath, they realized that the outbreak of Dark Rot had spread even to the heart of the city. With their hearts pounding, they knew they had to leave the city quickly before the sun set and the affected hives emerged from their hiding places. Good work, y'all. Good work. Oh, good, good question. Good question, Podu. Being an adventurer always carries a small pouch of healing herbs and bandages in his backpack. Good, good question, Podu. Good question. I'm just going to click heal. I'm just going to click heal. Oh, fight through the pain is the action. I rolled a three to heal. <laughs> this John Little Fire. Hey, this is the best AI game I've played in a while, y'all. I'm telling y'all, man. There's not a lot like this. The music is going with this instantly. <laughs> yeah, rip. It might be over for me, uh. Dead Eye signing out. You should you should get inside before nightfall. Wh why? <laughs> why? Why do you say that? <laughs> I'm 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 dying. I'm gonna die. If the next turn is anything sketchy, if the next turn is anything sketchy, I'm out. This music. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dub A, hey, dub Charlotte, man, dub Charlotte for real. There are reasons. <laughs> great, great, great. Okay, great. Yeah, no, I told you. I like the way that you made your um. Who is Yeppy playing as chat? 
Uh, Fel Fel Felicus. Felicus. Nah, chill, Yeffy. <laughs> chill, Yeffy. <laughs> Chill, chill. <laughs> Should be added in game for this adventure. No, facts, facts, facts. Nah, Yepi tried to off me real quick. <laughs> As I saw my fellow mates wounded, I took a minute to find a new solution to get to our. Tr I wrote a three, but, but I got a 12. As the battle with the dark rot infected creature came to an end, the adventurers took a moment to catch their breath. Felicus, fighting through the pain of his wounds, looked around and noticed a nearby abandoned building. He suggested they seek shelter before there for the night to heal up and regain their strength. Lilo Clue, always resourceful, agreed and led the way to the building. Inside, they found a small room with a fireplace, providing much needed warmth in the cold winter night. Lilo Clue rummaged through his backpack and pulled out his healing herbs and bandages. He just asked Bob about that, tending to the wounds of his companions. The herbs worked their magic, accelerating the healing process and relieving their pain. As they rested and ate, Lilo Clue had a sudden realization. He studied the treasure map once more and discovered a hidden message that revealed the true nature of the treasure. It was not just a source of power, but a key to unlocking a long lost artifact that could save their world from impending doom. Excitement filled the air as they realized the magnitude of their guest or their quest. With the renewed determination, they set off towards Wolftooth, a treacherous forest plagued by blizzards and inhabited by forest creatures and starving bandits. They knew they had to reach their destination for a lightfall or else face the unknown dangers lurking in the darkness. So I just died. I just died. <laughs> I, I, R.I.P. It was the freaking, freaking the infected creature that freaking attacked us up to that raggedy old store. Ask Bob how I died. Ask Bob how I died. Oh, I can do it. I did it, I did it, I did it. Dead Eye did not die in battle with the Dark Rod infected creature. I just said that it heard me. It heard me. However, during their journey through the treacherous Wolf Tooth Forest, Dead Eye fell victim to a cunning trap set by the starving bandits. His keen senses failed him that day, and he was overwhelmed by the ambush, leaving his companions devastated by the loss of their skilled marksmen. Yeah, they just left me. They they on their way to Wolf Tooth celebrating. They they on their way to Wolf Tooth dapping each other up. They on their way to Wolf Tooth like, hey, good work. That's one less, that's one less mouth to feed. That's crazy. That is so crazy. Let's see if they avenge me, y'all. Let's see if they avenge me. I feel like the odds is low. I feel like the odds is low. But no, this is this is good. I am, I'm Saudi. I'm Saudi Ray. <laughs> I'm Saudi Ray. Yeah, hungry bandits. Hungry bandits? This world is this world is crumbling. This world is crumbling, man.
I, I feel like I didn't go into it with that mindset either. I didn't go into it with that mindset of like, yo, everything around here is diminishing. So they ate you? The odds of that is probably high. The odds of that is probably high. As a loyal teammate carries Deadeye on his back for the rest of the adventure. Still poor and paranoid about the implication of Lilo Clue. Oh, I forgot. Yeppy's saying, or F Felicus is saying that he can't trust Lilo Clue. As Felicus carried Deadeye's lifeless body on his back, the weight of their loss weighed heavily on him. Suspicion lingered in his mind, and he kept a watchful eye on Lilo Clue, unsure of his true intentions. <laughs> the journey through the treacherous wolf tooth forest was grueling, which with blizzards raging and frost creatures lurking in the shadows, despite the challenges, they pressed on, determined to reach their destination. As they emerged from the forest, they found themselves facing a group of pirates. Their ship anchored near the shore. Lilo Clue, feeling guilty about Deadeye's demise, laid his body to rest in the dirt before journey Felicus on the path. Appreciate you. With weapons drawn, they confronted the pirates, ready for a fight. However, their wariness from the forest and the loss of their skilled marksmen put them at a disadvantage. The pirates, sensing their vulnerability, launched a surprise attack. Felicus fought valiantly, but the overwhelming numbers proved too much. In the chaos of battle, Lilo Clue's addiction to powders got the better of him, causing him to stumble and drop his weapon. Wait, what does your character have with, with powder? <laughs> oh my god, the wait, wait, wait. The outcome seemed dire as the pirates closed in, but just as all hope seemed lost, a mysterious figure emerged from the shadows, wielding a staff, crackling with lightning. The figure unleashed a powerful spell, sending the pirates flying and creating a barrier of protection around Felicus and Lilo Clue. Gasping for breath, they looked up to see their savior, a powerful sorceress named Zephra. She offered her assistance, revealing that she had been tracking the pirates and sensed their need for help. Grateful for her intervention, Felicus and Lilo Clue accepted her offer, knowing that their journey had an unexpected turn. Little did they know, Zephyra held secrets. Let's see how they died. Let's see how they died. As the adventurers continued their journey with Sephira, they found themselves in a desolate wasteland, the air thick with an other otherworldly energy. The ground trembled beneath their feet and ominous clouds loomed overhead. Le Lilo Clue, fighting through the pain of his injuries, stumbled forward, determined to keep up with the group. However, his weakened state made him an easy target for a lurking creature with a swift strike, the creature's claws pierced through Lilo Clue's chest, causing him to collapse in a pool of his own blood. His last words whispered Lilo Clue, echoed through the barren landscape. Felic is witnessing it. You just said your name before you died? <laughs> Felic is witnessing his comrade's demise was overcome with grief and rage, ignoring his own injuries. He charged at the creature, sword raised high, but in his blinded fury, he failed to notice the trap that had been set. As he swung his sword, a hidden mechanism triggered, <laughs> causing the ground to crumble beneath him. Felic is plummeted into a deep abyss, his screams fading into the darkness. Deadeye, now alone and outnumbered? Wait, am I alive now? Did it revive me? Lilo Clue was the only word I could say. <laughs> Lilo Clue. <laughs> With his last breath, he whispered tales of his past, his voice carrying the weight of a thousand adventurers. Yeah, how did I come back? I'm Crew. And so, 
Yeah, I don't know how I came back. Or maybe I was was I not completely dead when I got buried? When I got buried in Wolf Tooth? And so the tale of Lilo Clue, Dead Eye, and Felicus came to a tragic end. Their deaths leaving a void in the world they had fought so hard to save. The game has ended, but their inner <laughs> memory would live on, forever etched in the animals of history. Oh, in the annals. Wow. He was like a brother to me. Yeah, you guys both rolled really bad on your guys' heel. <laughs> you guys both rolled terribly on your heel. Dang. Hey, dub, 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 Charlotte. We, we could not beat your game, Charlotte. We could not beat your game, Charlotte. Um... A group of friends is competing to see who can make the best dinner to impress their girlfriends. They undertake funny challenges and have unforgettable experiences. That kind of sounds funny. I kind of want to do a funny one. Nah. What you thinking, Jen? What's on your mind, Jen? Oh, I got to be on that one. One day, a group of jungle animals realized their leader, Reggie the Lion, was missing. Jungle one is funny, too, I think. Oh, was that the jungle one I was just reading? One day, a group of jungle animals realized their leader, Reggie the Lion, was missing. <laughs> That's actually let's do the funny one. Let's do the let's do the chef one. Let's do the chef one. I will say, Jen, I feel like we've only done serious ones. I do kind of want to do a comedy one. Where was that one at? Trying to outdo each other and pressing the girl. Yeah, no, we should do this one. I don't have enough coins, though. I don't have enough coins. One of you guys are going to have to host it. We'll have to, we'll have to get more coins soon, y'all. Yeah, what's it? What's for dinner? What is for dinner? It's on the front page. Charlotte made it. I want to do the. I want to do a comedy one next. Charlotte was in his bag with that last one, so I already know. I already know what time it is. Ooh, you use the AI art too. I see that, Charlotte. <laughs> use the AI artwork. <laughs> but Charlotte, though. Charlotte's games are immortalized, dude. Y'all don't realize how early we are to this. <laughs> Charlotte got one of the early ones. Okay, so we got Billy, Johnny, and Jimmy. So Yepi got Johnny comes from a wealthy family with a higher budget than others that can only make a fried egg. Ask parents for money is his group thing. <laughs> An expert at making lasagna with a great sense of humor. Ooh, Ooh! I'm, a, I'm a chef me up a little lasagna. I should send you the details on that story. Please do for the one we just did Moko. Yes, I would like to see how that ends. I just did a cod one. How was it, Harry? I love that y'all on there. I love that y'all are on here. <laughs> All right. In a small town nestled between towering mountains and lush forests, three friends named Johnny, Billy, and Jimmy found themselves in a predicament. They were standing inside a 7-Eleven store. Their eyes <laughs> We're at a 7-Eleven? <laughs> I gotta go. See you next Sunday. Appreciate you, Dizzy D. Have a good one. Hard? Ooh. <clears throat> Johnny, with his health, had a higher budget than the others, but could only make a fried egg. Billy, an expert at lasagna, come on now, 
had a great sense of humor makes a good lasagna and is funny if i lose this i might be upset the shelves were nearly empty and it seemed like everyone was searching for something specific the trio knew they had to be smart if they wanted to find everything they needed uh without breaking the bank all right guys johnny said rubbing his chin thoughtfully we need to stick together and keep an eye out for any hidden treasures <laughs> Billy nodded, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Let's make sure those other guys don't find what they're looking for. With their plan in place, the three friends embarked on their quest to gather the necessary ingredients for their meals, unaware of the challenge. Role play this one. Use your character's background. Okay, w Billy, I made a good lasagna, so let's... Knowing how good my lasagna is... I think of all the substitutes for the ingredients I need. So that way it's easier for me to find all the ingredients I need, even if it doesn't match the recipe exactly. I feel like my grammarly really doesn't work in here, but. <laughs> Let's go, I wrote an 11, I wrote an 11. Okay, you're right, you're right. I just leaned into my character. I leaned into my character. Billy's move shows creativity and resourcefulness and finding substitutes for the ingredients. Get the 7-Eleven pizza? Hey! I tell my friends that I need to hit the bathroom. As I walk to the bathroom, I call my police friend to sabotage the other's food. That's why you wrote a two, Fodu. <laughs> That's why you wrote a two, boy. <laughs> That's why you wrote a two. Get the 7-Eleven pizza, pass it off as yours. Don't, look, don't get other player's ideas. Don't get them other player's ideas. I'm getting everything I need for my lasagna. Johnny bought eggs. He knows that eggs is his will not impress the ladies, but he knows for sure that they'll impress them by his rich and privileged status. As the trio continued their search for ingredients, Billy's clever plan to find substitutes paid off. He spotted a can of tomato soup and grinned mischievously. Who needs fresh tomatoes when I have this? He explained, adding it to his basket. He then found a packet of Italian seasoning and thought, this will give my lasagna that extra kick. With each aisle they explored, Billy managed to find creative alternatives for the missing ingredients, ensuring that his dish would still be a masterpiece. Meanwhile, Jimmy excused himself to use the bathroom, unaware of the consequences of his actions. Little did he know that his police friends misunderstood his request and ended up sabotaging the wrong people's food. <laughs> Chaos ensued as customers complained about their ruined meals, causing a commotion in the store. Johnny, on the other hand, confidently purchased a carton of eggs, believing that his privileged status would impress the ladies. However, as he approached the checkout counter, he accidentally dropped the carton, resulting in a gooey mess on the floor. The store manager scolded him, and Johnny's hopes of impressing his girlfriend begin to crack. Okay, I know that I'm funny. I know that I'm funny. I tell a joke. Hold on, hold on. With all my ingredients in hand, I tell a joke to the only worker by the door. While he while laughing, he starts crying of laughter. While the employee is wiping his face, I get out of the store without having to check out. What did I roll? A seven?
Ask Bob, guys. Yeah, we're not asking Bob anything. Where is the dinner going to be cooked at? The dinner will be cooked at Johnny's house. He has a spacious kitchen with all the necessary cooking utensils. Johnny's house is known for its cozy atmosphere, making it the perfect setting for a delicious meal shared among friends. Let's remember that. Thief! <laughs> So really my role didn't help. I just I just wanted to shake out the store real quick. I my role basically that was bad then. I would love the police to come back to the story. That was interesting that they misunderstood your request. Maybe we can lean into that too. Maybe we could lean into that. <laughs> I come out of the bathroom to find some ingredients. I look over to see some crackers and a can of onion soup. I grab these, I go to check out. I see Johnny wipe the floor of his eggs and seeing Billy try to shoplift and laughing at it. You couldn't act like you ain't see me, Podu. You couldn't act like I'm just walking by. I thought it would be an advantage to me to make it back home to, cook, to start cooking first. But Bob threw a, a, a wrench into the story. We gotta make sure Johnny's okay now. I'm not about to I'm not about to go in his crib like that. I gotta make sure Johnny good. As the chaos unfolded in the 7-Eleven store, <laughs> I forgot we were at a 7-Eleven. The trio managed to escape with their ingredients. Billy seizing the opportunity, told a hilarious joke to the worker by the door. The employee burst into laughter, tears streaming down his face. While he wiped his face, Billy slipped out of the store unnoticed, successfully avoiding the checkout. I'm gonna bring that back up. Meanwhile, Jimmy emerged from the group and spotted some crackers and a can of onion soup. He quickly grabbed them and made his way to the checkout, chuckled at Johnny's misfortunes with the eggs and Billy's daring escape. Johnny, feeling embarrassed, awkwardly handed the money to the cashier, hoping to erase the memory of his egg mishap. He then ventured to the back of the store to purchase more ingredients to enhance the meal and impress his girlfriend. With their ingredients secured, the trio left the 7-Eleven behind and returned to Johnny's house, ready to embark on their culinary adventure in the cozy kitchen. Knowing I, I, I make the best lasagna, I hurry up and put my ingredients in the oven. <laughs> to keep the others from using the oven, I stand in front of it and tell jokes to our girlfriends. So no one can interrupt. <laughs> this is a lot, but I'm just going to do it. Oh, should we ask Bob something? Ask Bob first. Oh, I should ask Bob something. Mm. Do you, Podu, that completely wasted our Bob question. Oh my gosh. Podu ruined our Bob question. We have to use Bob to help us beat the story. We have to use Bob to help us. <laughs> yeah, our girlfriend's even there at the <laughs> man Podu asked it if it knew Riz. Oh my god. If you want to do that. Wait, oh he Riz is a term used in the culinary world to describe a specific cooking technique. It refers to the process of lightly frying the pan or sauteing ingredients. It adds a delicious texture and flavor to the dishes. Oh, I'm gonna use that. Uh, 
I always use Riz in my lasagna. Knowing that, I start placing the ingredients in a pan so I can begin baking it. This might be my best dish yet. Eleven. <laughs> you want to mess up the story, Podu? You want to mess up the story? I got you. <laughs> Why did Podu ask if Bob knew what Riz is? <laughs> I'm gonna. You want to use that, Podu? I'm gonna use it to my advantage. How about that, Podu? How about that, Podu? Yeah, I use Riz. All right. I got my lasagna. I got Riz on that lasagna. <laughs> As the trio arrived at Johnny's house, the scent of anticipation filled the air. Billy wasted no time and immediately started preparing his famous lasagna. He skillfully layered the ingredients in a pan, ensuring each element was perfectly balanced. The aroma of a simmering sauce and melting cheese wafted through the kitchen, making everyone's mouth water. Billy's expertise in the kitchen was evident as he effortlessly executed his culinary masterpiece. Meanwhile, Jimmy decided to add a touch of nature to their meal. He carefully placed the leaves he had collected from the park onto a serving platter, <laughs> creating an artistic display as he warmed up the onion soup. <laughs> he couldn't help but notice Billy's subtle attempts to flirt with Johnny's girlfriend. Jimmy, being pro protective of his friend, decided to intervene. However, his attempt to defuse the situation backfired spectacularly. <laughs> In his haste, he accidentally knocked over the pot of onion soup, <laughs> causing it to spill all over the kitchen floor. The room fell silent as everyone stared at the mess, shocked by the unexpected turn of events. As for Johnny, his attempt to show off his new Mercedes ended in disaster. Ignoring the pleas of his friends to slow down, he hit the pedal and sped towards his house. However, just as he turned into his driveway, a stray cat what is happening? What was your... What did you say to this? While the rest of the crew got to walk to my home, I go in my new Mercedes. <laughs> but lost control of the car and crashed into a tree? The sound of crunching metal echoed through the neighborhood, leaving Johnny stunned and his beloved car in ruins. With their eventual actions leading to both triumph and calamity, the trio now face the challenge of salvaging their evening and impressing their girlfriends with their culinary creations. The kitchen was a mess, but their determination... So, po Yepi's in a car crash. I'm cooking the best dish I've ever put together. Uh, Podu's whatever the heck soup just got knocked all over the kitchen. Let's ask Bob. Where is everyone at in the next turn? Honestly, just screw it. <laughs> Honestly, just forget this dinner. In the next turn, Johnny, Billy, and Jimmy find themselves in a bustling farmer's market. The market is filled with vendors. Okay, so we're going back to the store now in the next turn? Okay. I know what I'm going to do. Knowing what's your, what's your character's name? Jimmy? Who was the one who crashed the bins? <laughs> Don't do what it said. It controls the story. It's already the back end is already a story. I was just trying to figure out where we all were. Knowing Johnny can't drive. I take this opportunity. Listen to me, Podu, I'm trying to win. Podu, you do you. You do you. You do you, Podu. Say what you want. <laughs> Say what you want. You got one health though. <laughs> Say what you want, you got one health. I take this opportunity. To joke with the girlfriends. T 
to make fun of Jimmy's onion soup <laughs> and how Johnny can't drive. <laughs> Roll dice. <laughs> you do you. You do you. You do you. <laughs> Bro is risking up the girlfriends. You do you. A nine. Let's go. <laughs> We supposed to have a fun time, not win. <laughs> nah, I see an opportunity. I see an opportunity. I just lost the one. I just lost the dungeon. I'm trying to win a dungeon now. <laughs> I lost the last one. Yeah, Podu, you got to heal up. I'm good. <laughs> I was going for a bit. What happened? Uh, I'm not gonna lie a lot this scene <laughs> a lot happened this scene You guys both died You guys both died You guys both died Let's go In the bustling farmers market Johnny Billy and Jimmy weave through the crowd their eyes scanning the colorful array of fresh produce and our aromatic spices. As they approached the vendor selling eggs, Johnny couldn't resist showing off his wealth once again. He purchased a carton of eggs, making sure to mention his other Mercedes park nearby. However, his attempt to flirt with Jimmy's girlfriend backfired when she scoffed at his materialistic nature. Meanwhile, Billy seized the opportunity to lighten the mood. He entertained the girlfriends with his witty jokes, successfully diverting their attention from Johnny's failed flirtation. As for Jimmy, he managed to savage his onion soup by scooping it back into the pan and crushing the crackers into the bowl, creating a unique texture. Uh, little did they know that their actions in the market would have dire consequences as they left the market. A mysterious figure watched them from the shadows, plotting their downfall. So now we got to ask what happened to you guys. What happened to Johnny and jimmy while we were out at the market while you were out at the market johnny and jimmy decided to explore the nearby park johnny still reeling from his car accident took a moment to reflect on his actions and vowed to be more careful in the future meanwhile jimmy always looking for an adventure stumbled upon a hidden treasure map tucked away in a tree chunk Excited by the prospect of a new quest, the duo set off. Dang. Yeah, this one got super random. I think we might have broke this adventure. I think we might have broke this adventure. It was whatever happened here when I asked where we are at. It was somewhere in here when we asked where we were all at. Bullcrap is what happened. <laughs> yeah, when it went when it flipped us to the market, that's where it got super confused. I told you, yeah, Podu, you did, you did, you did, Podu, you did. Even after all the commotion, I don't even know how to spell commotion. I serve my famous lasagna to everyone. It's perfect. I rolled a nine. Perfect. As the girlfriends arrived at Johnny's house, the aroma of the trio's culinary creations filled the air. Billy confidently served his famous lasagna, a masterpiece of flavors and textures. This is incredible, one of them exclaimed. <laughs> Savory each mouthful. Billy beamed with his pride, knowing that his dish had won their hearts. Meanwhile, Johnny and Jimmy returned from their adventure in the park, breathless and exhilarated. <laughs> they had followed the treasure map to a hidden cave where they discovered a chest filled with gold and precious gems. Excitedly, they rushed back to the house, eager to share their newfound wealth. Little did they know their triumphant return would be overshadowed by Billy's culinary triumph. As they entered the dining room, the girlfriends were still raving about the lasagna. <laughs> nah, that's funny. Nah, that's funny. <laughs> hey, that, that's good. Nice treasure. This lasagna, though? Know? <laughs> Friends exchange glances, realizing that this is on top. <laughs> Let's do Charlotte's. Yeah, we'll do Charlotte's. I want to beat this, though. I'm about to beat this. 
I'm just gonna heal up. I'll just do a heal turn then. I'll just do a heal turn. This is dumb. It's cause you lost. It's cause you lost. We good. We good. It's Jimmy's onion soup. It had a unique texture, but the flavors were a bit overpowering. I tell jokes about how my lasagna <laughs> was always the best thing on this earth. But yeah, we'll run, we'll run shirtless next. Now Malik gonna rip up our girl, Podu, because our character found a map. <laughs> As the girlfriends finished ranking the meals, Billy couldn't resist the opportunity to boast about his lasagna once again. <laughs> He stood up, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Ladies, let me tell you a joke about how my lasagna is always the best thing on this earth. <laughs> However, his attempt at humor fell flat as the punchline didn't quite hit the mark. The room fell silent. Let's heal up again. Let's use another turn to heal up. <laughs> Podu, you guys wasn't focused. You guys weren't focused on the mission. You guys weren't focused. Win, victory, victory. <laughs> I was. All right, let's do Charlotte's and then that's it for me. That's it for me. Let's do the jail pump. Let's do the jail pump one. <laughs> if one of y'all want to start it up, one of y'all want to start it up. Oh, did the Lions win? Lions did win. Wow. What a day. What a day. Uh. Oh, gosh, all Sherland said was LMAO. Set in a dystopian steampunk reality, three cellmates must escape from prison before their execution. In this prison is hundreds upon thousands of inmates trapped inside. Rumors that say in a secret code that only the elite guards know in the warden's office unlocks a way out. Along with the situation, the cellmates face the festival of the High Empress happening outside, attracting more eyes to your location. But now's the time you're sure of it. Okay, we have Zolats. A Malikian? <laughs> no, not the Malikians. I'm gonna be them. No, taken. No, Podo. Is there any other Malikians? <gasps> a human raider with a keen eye. He was a convicted for robbery of a Malikian convoy truck. Oh my gosh, the Malikia legacy lives on. The Malikia legacy lives on. I think it's just us. Unless, yeah, if anybody else wants to join, come on. We still need one. But I think it might have only been us. Oh, wait, no, there was somebody else. There was somebody else. Oh, my chat is not going up. Who was it? Harry that was already on there? Oh, Goons or yeah, Charlotte? Do you want to join your own? You should look at the characters first. Oh, Goons are in the building. Okay, okay, bet, bet, bet. All right, so we got Mal we got Zolats, who's a Malikian. We got Jackal, a Kabold with an expert charismatic skill convicted for tax fraud. Okay. Rippers. Azo oh, Zo I feel like you I've heard that name before. Convicted for assault on an elite guard. Dumb as rocks, but amazing at combat situations. Zoltalon? A Zoltalon. Who is deep down a scumbag, horrified by what he saw in the Zoltalon Kafia. That abandoned him. He was convicted for insider trading. 
<laughs> a cat folk from the west side of the city. He is acrobatic, but is also extremely erratic and can barely speak from the pure insanity he keeps. He was convicted for disturbing the peace. <laughs> Lick wounds. Hey, that's sweet. A human raider with a keen eye for raid. That, that's the one I just selected. So this one's cool. From a Malikian convoy truck. That's hard. A cat folk with a rebel, Klebo. With a rebel perspective on things, can heal others with his spit <laughs> as a team heal ability. He has con convicted for breaking the heart of the High Empress. <laughs> Let's do it. Start it up. Start it up. Start it up, Fodu. Start it up, Fodu. Let's do this. I, I said that too when I first seen your thing where I was like, you put in a lot of thought in your characters <laughs> all right let's use bob correctly this time in a dimly lit prison cell three unlikely allies found themselves zolat skilled uh lock picker from malik kia <laughs> i love that there was Z zimbibs a cat folk from the west side of the city known for his acrobatic dude we have to who's gonna make a malik kia scenario we need multiple malik kia scenarios <laughs> <laughs> a rat scurried across the floor feasting on a severed finger outside the festival lights illuminated the surroundings offering a glimmer of hope the current goal was to escape the cell or find another way out of the prison the door was locked but a sharp stone brick piece lay on the ground potentially useful makeshift weapon as a guard patrolled the hallway the players knew they had to act swiftly and quietly and what they'll do next um Hmm. Okay. Seeing the sharp stone brick, I know this could be a useful item. I don't know what to ask Bob though. What's the missing girl's name? Ooh, I don't remember. I don't remember. Is that what is that where you got the, the character names from? Was our last Malik Kia run? Oh, we're getting deep in the Malik Kia lore. Oh, we're getting deep in there. For those who don't know. For those who are like, what are they? What the heck are they talking about, Malik Kia? So our very first time seeing the potential of AI and role playing games, we made a a galaxy. No, it was just a planet called Malik Kia, where everyone had the first name Malik. <laughs> and this is like sci-fi punk future too. So it's like futuristic. There's crime. That's it. Every everything has Malik in the in the prefix. So we have Malika Guinies. We have Malikra Soft. <laughs> Gotta go see you guys on the next live. Appreciate you stopping by, Harry. See you next time. <laughs> so the Malik Malik Kia is a real thing at this point. Malik Kia is one hundred percent a real thing. Steampunk. Yeah, we could give it a steampunk vibe. We can give it a steampunk vibe. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that being in the lore. and be similar to a knife. Okay. The first the first roll is always nerve-wracking. 12 though. Dang. I pushed the on um, random bricks in the cell hoping one gives a 2. Oh gosh. <laughs> that might not be good. Did Bob not like your did Bob not like it? Did Bob hate that? This is set in a steampunk society. Okay. I mean, if we want to get deeper, y'all, Malik Kid wasn't just one time period. That was just that's just the name of the planet. It could have definitely had a futuristic time period. It could have had a medieval time period. <laughs>
So let's try let's try to find a steampunk steampunk lo-fi. Let's see what comes up for that. All right, Sluggos, recognizing the potential of the sharp stone brick, picked it up with a sense of anticipation. As he sh held it in his hand, he felt an unexpected urge of power coursing through his veins. The stone brick seemed to have absorbed some mystical energy from the rebel graffiti on the walls. Sluggos could now throw the brick with incredible accuracy and force, turning it into a deadly projectile, which is right up my skill set. This newfound ability would prove invaluable in their escape. Meanwhile, Zimbibs, in his erratic state, began pushing on random bricks in the cell, hoping to find a hidden passage. However, his actions had unintended consequences with a loud rumble. The wall collapsed, revealing not an escape route, but a hidden chamber filled with cards. <laughs> the elements of surprise was lost, and the players found themselves facing a group. Thanks, Goonster. Thanks, Goonster. Thank you for that. Uh, Zolas focused on his lock picking skills, managed to successfully unlock the cell door. But as he did so, a small piece of the lock broke off, jamming the mechanism. The door was open, but only particularly leaving them vulnerable to discovery. The players had to act quickly to overcome the guards and make their escape. What will they do next? I feel like we, we definitely need to ask Bob this. We need to ask Bob something. Because did we fall through the floor? Did we fall through the floor after... After Podu's character lockpicked? Days before I traded some... <laughs> Android tarts for a lock pick. <laughs> Where are we at? <laughs> you find yourselves in a hidden chamber within the prison filled with guards who are alerted. Okay. And the guards are armed and ready for fight. Okay. Okay. The whole wall just fell down. Well, I Podu just put us in the in there then. So may, maybe that's we use Bob's one question to turn the story in our advantage. So I think always think that when we ask Bob something, ask it something that could move it towards our direction. Like maybe we ask Bob, like when we made it out of the room before the floor collapsed, what level are we on? Something like that. That's what that's how I'm thinking we use Bob moving forward. I throw my lockpick at a guard's eyeball. <laughs> I use my sharp rock to take out enchanted because we got to remember it gave it a power last time so my, I use my enchanted sharp rock to take out as many guards as it could hit to give us any chance to give a break in the crowd for us to run through. Because Bob gave me an enchanted knife. I got an enchanted knife, so I better be able to take out like... Y'all, please be smart. Please be smart. Podu just ran a five, so Goonster, this might be up to you right now. Do a team ability. Do, ooh. Maybe that is the times you use a team ability when we're all like, when we all get low rolls or something. Bro, there's so much to this. <laughs> there is so much to this.
Go or you made Charlotte, you made some really good games. You made some really good games. These are all solid. So next time, next time I'm gonna use. Because the action is hard to do. I did see that. I did see that. I did see that. Bob didn't like that at all. As the guards closed in on them, Zolat's in a is a desperate attempt to escape through his lockpick out of guard's eye. The lockpick missed its mark, only grazing the guard's cheek. But it was enough to distract him momentarily. Um hoping to create a diversion, however, his aim that sucks. Hitting Zimbeebs instead? My bad. The cat folk let out a yowl of pain. My bad, Goonster. The guards now fully alert closed in on the players, outnumbering them. With no other choice, they fought with all their might. You, I, I'm just going to heal up. I'm just going to heal up. I don't even want to read the rest of this. I'm just going to heal up. I'm sorry, Goonster. <laughs> Band itself with sock rags and fight through the pain. <laughs> Um, despite the efforts, yeah, 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 uh, vast, wait, the players were then dragged through the prison hallways lined with inmate cells, their hopes of escaping dwindling, they had entered the heart of the prison, a vast labyrinth from which they are seen to be no way out, their goal remained the same, to continue to try to escape to the outside, so we're further in the prison, Podu just rolled a two. I know what the, I know I got something to ask Bob. I got something to ask Bob. Will the guards No, after the guards put us in a cell together, did they leave us any bandages? You see how I worded it? Does that make sense? As the guards put you in the cell together, you notice a small first aid kit. That's how you use Bob. That's how you use Bob. That's how you use Bob. I got it. I got it. I got it. I think I, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. That's how you have to use Bob. You have to sway Bob in your way. No, we're not dying. We're n oh no. Slugo's determined to fight through the pain you sock rags from his tattered clothing to bandage his wounds. Though the makeshift bandages provided some relief, they were far from ideal. As he gritted his teeth and pushed toward forward, the pain intensified with each step. Slugo's knew he had to endure for his allies. Solats, on the other hand, quickly gave up hope, overwhelmed by the guard's strength and seemingly insurmountable odds he succumbed to despair he sank to his knees resigned to his fate but just as he was about to accept death a sudden explosion rocked the prison shaking the walls and causing chaos in the midst of the commotion Zimbibs in his heretic state licked his wounds <laughs> unbeknownst to him the ointment he used from the first aid kit had been contaminated <laughs> The strange connection sent him into a fit of convulsions, his body contorting in unnatural ways, his mind already teetering on the edge of insanity, could no longer withstand the strain. Zimbibs collapsed, lifeless, as the poison ravished his system. The explosion has created an opening in the prison walls, leading to an unknown path. With a heavy heart, he realized that he was now alone. His allies lost in chaos. Determined. Okay. Okay. So you can use mana points to increase your your roll odds.
So that's what the mana ro things are for? Oh, y'all, this game is deep, y'all. No, I'm gonna roll to increase my mana. I have one health though. I rolled a 10. What's up? Who's unlucky? Who's unlucky? Sugo's determined to survive. Tightly wrapped his wounds with sock rags and pushed through the pain. His resilience paid off as the bandages held, held firm, providing much needed support. With each step, he grew stronger, fueled by the memory of his fallen allies. As he made his way out of the prison, an explosion had created a breach in the walls, leading to a path shrouded in mystery. Merging from the darkness, Slugos found himself in the midst of a vibrant festival. Bright lights. Oh, this is my distraction. The presence of an increased number of guards suggested the imminent arrival of the Empress herself. Slugos knew he had- I'm coming at the same time the Empress is here? <laughs> Using his stealth and combat skills to navigate through the crowded streets, the mysterious explosion and the fate of his comrades still weighed heavily on his mind, driving him forward in his quest for freedom. I'm gonna do the increased mana roll since I got some more health. I'm gonna do the increased mana. Slugos hidden amidst the, the vibrant festival, carefully pulled out his pocket, his slingshot. Oh, so that's why the actions have to be, the actions have to be role playing in themselves. Because that action actually goes against the story. Oh my gosh. So then now I can use that man I just got in that role to. Oh. Okay. Slew goes amidst the blah, blah, blah. As he released the slingshot. The sharp objects flew through the air, hitting their mark with decision. The guard let out a cry of pain and stumbled backwards, drawing the attention of the surrounding guards in the ensuing chaos. Slugo seized the opportunity to slip away unnoticed. He weaved through the crowds, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oh. Who was alive? Everybody's dead. Everybody died. Everybody died. As I slip away, I find a good place to rest and heal up. I'm going to use that as a free will. What's the, oh, what is the disadvantages of using a heal free will versus using an actual heal option? Because in my mind, I'm typing this and then the next turn I'll be able to heal. And think out my next move. How about that? I rolled an 11. I rolled an 11. I slip away and find a good place to rest and think out my next move. Slugo, slipping away from the chaos of the festival, found a secluded spot to rest and to gather his thoughts. As, his, as he caught his breath, he noticed a phone booth nearby. Curiosity peaked. He approached it and discovered a note card with a number labeled, Tunsis <laughs> the Driving Cat. <laughs> Intrigued by the mysterious look. That's more Malikia lore if you guys don't know. <laughs> no, that's actually no, that's V3 RPG lore. We didn't use that in Malikia. We used that in a in another. Yes. Intrigued by the mysterious message, Slugos wondered if calling his number could lead to a potential getaway. <laughs> Remembering the falling Zimbibs and Zolats, he knew he had the honor, had to honor their memory by finding a way out of this predicament with determination in his eyes Slugos dialed the number on the cord hoping that Tuntus the driving cat would be their ticket to freedom the barren wasteland outside the city walls awaited him it's desolation okay okay Tuntus answers as he always does and asks for my specific 
location and says give him two minutes and 38 seconds <laughs> I'm gonna use my mana I'm gonna roll my dice I rolled a 12 I rolled a 12 Slugos feeling a mix of anticipation and uncertainty dialed the number on the note cord after a few rings a voice answered in on the other end since it's the driving cat here what's your location <laughs> Slugos quickly relayed his whereabouts hoping that his mysterious figure could provide a means of escape to his surprise, Tuntus replied, give him two minutes and 38 seconds. <laughs> Intrigued by the spe specificity of the request, Slugos waited anxiously, unsure of what would happen next. Suddenly, a loud rumble echoed through the barren wasteland, shaking the ground beneath him. Slugos looked up to see a massive modified vehicle approaching at breakneck speed. It was Tuntus, driving a heavily armored car with mounted weapons, with a grin on his face. Tuntus opens the door and motion for Slugos to hop in. The unexpected arrival of Tuntus and his incredible... <laughs> Dude, Gunster, or not Gunster, <laughs> Charlotte, dumb freaking story. <laughs> Dumb story, dude. The unexpected arrival of Tuntus and his incredible vehicle marked a turning point in, in Slugo's journey. Offering a glimmer of hope in the midst of desolation, what will Slugo's do next? Soon, soon as he pulls up, I hop in. Still having energy to use my amazing leg muscles. I wrote an eight. <laughs> I wrote an eight. I wrote an eight. I wrote an eight. This is a great adventure. Create more. Dude, th this is a dub. This is a freaking dub. <laughs> Let's go. I a hey, if y'all don't have a Sherlin win under y'all belt, y'all weak, man. If you ain't got no, if you don't have a Sherlin game win under your belt, you're weak. You're weak, Goonster Podu. Go back and practice, Goonster Podu. Go practice. If you don't have, if you don't have a Sherlin win under your belt, man. Slugos wasted no time and hopped into Tunta's armored vehicle, feeling a surge of adrenaline as they sped away from the festival chaos. As they raced through the barren wasteland, Slugos couldn't help but marvel at Tunta's driving skills. The modified car effortlessly maneuvered over rough terrain, leaving a trail of dust in its wake. Along the way, they encountered a group of bandits who had been causing trouble in the area. Slugos, fueled by his desire for justice, leaped out of the vehicle and engaged in a fierce battle. His ranged combat skills proved invulnerable as he took down each bandit with precision. With the threat eliminated, Slugos rejoined Tuntus in the vehicle, feeling a sense of accomplishment. They continued their journey, eventually reaching the hidden outpost where they found Zolats. Battered? But alive, Zolas, Poto, you lived. Together, they shared stories of their adventures, mourned the loss of Zimbeam. Yo, you, you lived, Poto. <laughs> the adventure had come to an end, but the memories and bonds forged along the way would forever remain. Slugos was declared the victor, having proven his strength. Wow, R.I.P. I gotta mess with this weapon. Goonster, I would love to play one of your stories. Goonster, I would be honored. Goonster, I would be honored to play some of your stories. Y'all still lost their Frostbird. <laughs> I'ma come back, I'ma spend the block on that one, Charlotte. I'ma spend the block on that one. I'ma spend the block on that one, believe that. Believe that. So I don't see a way to Does anyone know how you can rate games? Cause I want to make sure we, we give Sherlin all the love he can get.
Oh, they do have ratings. How did you guys rate it? Make a story, goons. It's addicting. Hey, man, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this, man. All right. You had a chance once you completed it. Dang. All good. Hey, you, you'll get yours. You'll get yours. You'll get yours, dude. You killed it on both of yours. You killed it on both of yours. It makes me want to go back and I need to do... um. Oh, I should do... We should do a... um. We should do a Childish Gold Cup. I'm, I, hey, that's my challenge, y'all. Next time we boot this up, everybody has some stories in here. And I'll make my next... I'll make the ch next Childish Gold Cup race. It won't be the next Childish Gold Cup race, but it will be one. It will be a Childish Gold Cup race. We will get another Childish Gold Cup race going. Because now I want to build the lore. I want to build the lore of a bunch of racers. Oh my god, yo, it's, this is going to be addicting. This is going to be addicting making stories. Wags, we're just about to head off, man. You did it just at the end. This is a good stream. If you're out of coins, join and ask for more. Hold on, what's this music though? <laughs> Y'all hear the outro? <laughs> Y'all hear the stream outro? I figured that's all right. I was with family today, but I'm glad the stream went great. Hey, all good, all good. Appreciate you stopping by though. Appreciate you stopping by. <laughs> it was definitely a good stream, man. Developers give coins for free who actually play the game. Oh, that's all we needed to hear. That's all we needed to hear. Childish gang, LOL. Look at the emotes. Look at the emotes. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, we're, we're heading out, man. I really just wanted to say, like, we, we just dropped the latest Sims episode. Please go check out that latest Sims episode. We had people in the community that did some voice acting. Ray, Green, my boy Shogun, who you guys have been seeing on the live streams here and there. That episode was like, I'm like, dude, we're really like on to something. Only in the sense of what we've done so far as a community. Like you guys have supported everything you guys are doing. Just keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally all i'm saying everything y'all have been doing so far just keep doing it because it is working like everything we got going on is just going up so just keep doing what y'all doing and we we good we are good y'all and so yeah we got the project zomboy server coming up we still got the the roblox project hit a hit a uh hit a wall just some things that I've been figuring out with the programmer and what I'm trying to do design wise. We hit a wall for it, but we'll be back. But now we're turning focus to the Project Zomboy server. That's coming. Excited for that. It's going to be like, a. I, I basically just want it to be a content server. Like you would just go into that server to just clown. Just be like, go into that server, just ready. You know, some, some stuff going to go down. That's all you going to know. That's all you gonna know when you hop onto that server. <laughs> but yeah, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. What else do we got coming up? MC show. Next MC show should be soon. Um, we are going to try to predict what the game of the year will be. That is basically the, the next MC show episode. It's just we're just gonna try to predict what the game of the year will be. MC show. And I am trying some different things in that too. I'm gonna be trying trying some different type of scenes on that. If she shows are my favorite things, that means a lot. That means a lot. That means a lot. That is literally the most script writing I do for this whole YouTube page. Like some things I'll make script for, like intros, like a lot of this is improv. 
MC show, not a lot of it is improv. <laughs> Just because I want to make sure I get my like points across. <laughs> but I like I like the MC show. That's one of, that's one of my favorite things to work on. That is one of my favorite things to work on. But hey man, I am heading out. I'm about to eat dinner. Relax. Get ready for the week. But yeah, man. Like I said, keep doing what y'all doing. It is working. <laughs> it is working. We got people reaching out to us. We got cool little content creators in the in the building. We got people like Twisted and Wags just chilling in here. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's crazy. <laughs> y'all have a good night. I'll catch y'all next time.